Okay, as Paul Krugman was saying, uh, the history of slavery, I'm quoting Paul Krugman, is a strong predictor of everything from gun control, or rather its absence, to low minimum wages, to hostility to unions, to tax policy. That's, that's it. He says 80% of the population of Medicaid refusing America lives in states that practice slavery before the Civil War. Only one former member of the Confederacy has expanded Medicaid. On top of that, you know, this, this, this death cult has, the reason that this death cult has been alive and well in the United States is because after the, after the South lost the Civil War and slavery, quote, ended, there was a, about a 10-year period called Reconstruction where actually African Americans were elected to public office. They took, in fact, I think they took a majority of the political offices in South Carolina where they were a majority of the population. Um, they took significant political offices across Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama. And, and then Rutherford B. Hayes, in order to get elected president, made a deal with the South, which was occupied by the Northern Army. Right? The ability of blacks to vote in the South, the ability of African Americans to vote in the South, was being enforced literally by the presence of Union troops. And Hayes' deal to become president was that he would withdraw those Union troops if he would just be made president. And he, they, he was, and he did, and that was the end of Reconstruction. Immediately, the South said, okay, we can't have them as slaves anymore, but we're going to have them as cheap labor. And the South has been the cheap labor South ever since. And all the stuff that goes with it. It's a cult that suggests that some humans are of greater value than others, some are less of lesser value than others, based solely on the amount of pigment in their skin. Of melanin in their skin. This is insane. I mean, you got like Congressman Steve Scalise, the third most powerful Republican in the U.S. House of Representatives. He's the House whip. He's the Republican Party's whip. He's the, he's the, he, 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 he works under uh, Kevin McCarthy and John Boehner. He ran against David Duke down in Louisiana. And, and what he said was, the novel, and I'm quoting... He said he embraces many of the same conservative views as David Duke, but is far more viable. That's not a quote. He's, here's the exact quote. The novelty of David Duke has worn off. The voters in this district are smart enough to realize that they need to get behind someone who not only believes in the issues they care about, in other words, the David Duke issues, but can also get elected. Duke has proven that he can't get elected, and that's the first and most important thing. And others vote for me. I'm not identified as a crazy, although I still believe all this stuff. This is the third most powerful Republican in the House of Representatives. This, this is the Southern strategy on steroids. This is how the Republicans took the South. So, and now we see, you know, days after this uh, over at uh, uh, the Daily Beast, uh, Kate Bricolet, days after the massacre at a black church in South Carolina, KKK flyers are showing up with candy on people's front lawns. Included a phone number for the loyal white knights of the Ku Klux Klan, along with peppermint and Tootsie Rolls. It was, they were distributed under cover of darkness, of course. In California, Kansas, Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. A message on this hotline that you call, which is based in North Carolina, salutes Dylan Roof. Because he said he wanted to start a race war. It, it says, we in the loyal white knights of the KKK would like to say hail victory to Dylan S. Roof, who decided to do what the Bible told him to do. An eye for an eye, a tooth for the tooth. They, black people, have spilled our blood too long. It's about time someone spilled theirs. If it ain't white, it ain't right. White power. That's the message you get if you call this 800 number. So what's the deal here? This, this cult is based on religious, na uh, religious nationalism or a, or a romantic nationalism. The, big, the best example of it is Gone with the Wind. And there's a great op-ed over at, uh, by Johnny Price, a folklorist over at uh, uh, Huffington Post. And he says, okay, let's take on these revisionist talking points. He's, there's this lost cause narrative that the Civil War was a romantic struggle for freedom against an oppressive government trying to, trying to force cultural change. So the, the people in the, in the, you know, the, the apologists for the modern day, like the stars and bars, would say, well, the Civil War was about the economics of slavery. 
excuse me, the Civil War was about economics, not slavery. Well, no, the, the Civil War was actually about the economics of slavery. They'll say the Civil War was about states' rights, not slavery. Well, yeah, the Civil War was about the states' right to maintain slavery. They say it's not, that's not the Confederate flag. True, it's a battle flag. It's, it's a banner under which men fought and died to enact secession and defend slavery. Then they say heritage is not hate. And he says, this is, this is a funny story. Her, the heritage is hate. Yes, Senator, it does represent one side of the Civil War. That side, he's talking back to Lindsey Graham, that side that advocated slavery and secession. It's a flag of treason. Mike Huckabee gave a speech to this group. They've killed more people. These, these folks have killed more people in the United States, these you know, conservative citizens, than, al- than Al-Qaeda has since 9-11. So how do we break the hold of this cult? The way they, had, they did it in Germany, the way they did it in the former Yugoslavia, the way they did it in Japan, the way they did it in, in Rwanda after the, after the genocide in Rwanda, which again was a death cult. It was led by talk radio show hosts, by the way. The way you break people out of these cults is by awakening them to the dysfunctional and destructive and false lying narrative of the cult itself. And that's what I hope to be doing today. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-536-2370. This is an extraordinary moment in America. We are finally having the conversation we should have had in 1880. Let's continue it. 